So let's start with the quarterbacks. And again, we get to see just a little bit of practice. We don't get to see the scrimmages. But Austin Price, it looks like every time we're out there, and from hearing what Josh Heupel had to say about his quarterbacks post-scrimmage number one, off to a good start, Joe Milton looks good in practice. Yeah, been very, very solid. Um, you know, I mean, has he been perfect? No, but I mean, no quarterback's going to be. It, it, just steady improvement. He improved from year one to being the backup last year and then, of course, being the starter of the last couple of games. I think he's improved more this year. Again, I, I, I do think that uh, – the biggest thing for Joe is, you know, you're obviously your highs are going to be really high with him. Can how, you know, not have the lows be so low. Can you, you know, instead of, I mean, Hubs knows this all the time. How many three and a half were there against Clemson? Uh, six or seven. Yeah. So can you make that three, four? Like you're not going to, you know, be perfect, but at the same time, like, can you make it, make, make your number of miscues or misfires, smaller and I think if he does that then I think that this is a Tennessee offense that will still be good I, I've said the whole time I thought Tennessee's offense would take a fraction of a step back just because of what you lost and the, and the steady Eddie you know players you had last year I think Tennessee's defense takes a huge step forward and so thus you know you can have just as much success I, I just think ultimately this is gonna be one of those things where Joe when he has those big high plays it's going to be really, really, really like, whoa, that was unbelievable. You know what I mean? Like, I think that, that, that Joe is that guy. I, I think, Grant, the biggest question I've got with Joe is can he put – it's a game of errors, okay? You're, you're not going to play perfect, particularly when the coaching the coaching staff is telling you to rip it, you know, don't be afraid to take chances, those types of things. How does Joe put a bad play behind him to where – he can overcome second long if first down was a bad play, as opposed to compounding a bad first down play into a bad second down play, and then you do have one of those three and outs. I think that's Joe's. Joe's admitted that's been a challenge for him uh, in his career, and I think that's the question that you have with Joe piggybacking off what Austin said. Was it Joey Halsey on media day talking about Joe not being so hard on himself? Do I have that right in my head that he was kind of focusing on kind of why the mistake Yep. the mistake happening instead of kind of what made the mistake happen and how to correct it, stuff like that. Like, yeah, to Austin's point, he's got to be able to move on from those moments. The unfortunate thing for us is we've got, what, a little under three weeks until kickoff, and we're really not going to see anything with our own eyes that proves that Joe can do this or be the guy. Like, we're going to see him hand it off for 10 minutes. We're going to see him throw routes on air for 10 minutes. Uh, and in a couple weeks, even that's going to get eliminated, and they're going to go into regular season mode. So that's the thing for us is – Everybody's got questions, and people ask us questions about what it looks like, and you can talk to people and all that stuff, but we're not going to see it with our own eyes until, you know, 11 a.m. Eastern time or uh, Central time uh, in Nashville on September 2nd against Virginia. So there's going to be a lot of questions like there has been since the Orange Bowl ended, and we're not really going to have any answers until we see it with our own eyes, really. Oh, I mean, two two weeks. I mean, it, it's literally this is the last week. Like, we'll, yeah, that's we'll true. Like this, you know, this weekend, and that's it. Buddy. Like, it, <laughs> yeah. it's off. And so, um, but you're right. I mean, if you're doing your due diligence, I mean, there's enough people to talk to, and, you know, um, uh, several of them are, <laughs> I would call them Eeyores. So, like, they're going to be <laughs> for, the, for the downside of things anyway. So, like, uh, you know, if they're, if they're saying Joe's, you know, performing well, then they're not, uh, they're probably, they pr probably performing pretty well. So, um, you know, for, for my liking, again, I think he's continued to steadily improve. Um, but Grant's right. Until you get out there, you don't know. It's kind of like the offensive line. We've all talked about there's some worry there. There's some worry from everybody over there about just left guard, right tackle, all that. But, you know, the scheme sets up a certain way. to It may not be as glaring as if you just kind of got in two tights and got north-south and, you know, tried to run downhill on everybody. Yeah, getting back to the quarterbacks, because we're going to dive in the offensive line and all the other positions in a second. But one, one more final thing on the quarterbacks. You, you know, Eric, I think the one thing that stands out to me about Joe a little bit is it doesn't feel like the personality and all of that is kind of forced or as, or as much as a flamboyant show as it was, particularly that first year. You know what I mean? Uh, on the practice field, even in the brief time that we're there, there's a lot more Joe trying to help his, his teammates – coach them, instruct them, and a little less of the flair that, that we saw. I don't think – I don't know that that's necessarily a big deal, but I think he's got a little bit more of a business-minded approach to things this fall camp than maybe what we saw that first year but before he got ready to go out and play uh, that season opener as a starter. I just think he's comfortable, right? And um, he, he's a guy that's 
this is now his third year in the system. Uh, he's learned, as Austin pointed out, he's learned a little bit every single year. He's gotten better a, a little bit every single year. He learned from Hendon Hooker the last two years. I think he's comfortable in his own skin right now. And you're right, you do see him pulling aside of some receivers and, and kind of going over some matchups. A lot of these young receivers, he's coaching up Nico at all the you know all the time, you know during practice while we're out there. So I think he's a guy that's comfortable in himself. He's competitive, and also he's just ready to go out there and and, and let it be his time. And, and we'll see exactly what that looks like. Real quick before we move on from the quarterbacks, though. A quick Nico update. It's never going to be perfect, continuing to get uh, more and more involved in the offense, his grasp of the offense. Austin, while we're out there, again, he looks you know pretty decent. Josh Hopple had a lot of things, good things to say about him after the post scrimmage. What have you heard about Nico Iamaliava so far in fall camp? One one quick thing before we go to Nico, I will say, what are we what are we saying at, either in the two minute drill after the game in Nashville and in the post game pod about how crisp everything looks? You remember that first game Joe had two years ago, man? I mean, Tennessee won rather easily, but it was sloppy. I mean, like they, they, they had to hit some late, you know, a couple of late touchdown bombs. They just, it, it, they just, they, they were sloppy. How much more crisp did they look two years in with some different personnel? I, that's something I'm looking for. As for Nico, again, super talented, um, a guy that, you know, has made some freshman mistakes in fall camp, as you would expect, but flashes big and in hubs when, when he flashes it, I think it leaves everybody going, man, <laughs> the future's bright. Yeah, you know, I think the scrimmage is a little bit of a tough judgment for him because, you know, he didn't have a lot of weapons to throw with, um, you know, because the, the twos were working with Joe as the ones because the ones were on the side watching. Uh, so, I mean, and Nico wasn't throwing to um, a great core of receivers who were going against – I mean, they were, he was throwing to walk-on receivers who were going against the Ricky Gibsons and the Jordan Matthews and – and those guys who you think are your real future in the secondary, I'm not knocking on the walk on receivers, but it's just a different level there. The one thing I keep hearing about Nico is from people is he's better after we're gone. Not because Grant, he's afraid of the media or bothered by the media, but the more clutter that you get out there, the more quote real football it is and less routes versus air and that type of thing, the better Nico seems to perform. Now we haven't seen that, but that's kind of the vibe that you're getting is that he was better in the scrimmage than he's been in some practices leading up to the scrimmage. I mean, what was the talk in bowl practices and spring practice that it was kind of a struggle to adjust to this pace, which I think it would be for any quarterback coming into the system and, and trying to play as fast as Josh Hopper wants to play. But to hear Josh on what day was that Thursday after the scrimmage say he doesn't make the same mistake twice as a freshman and a guy that, you know, has made that progress from bowl practice to spring practice to fall practice. And it seems like he's progressing pretty quickly because like what Hubs is talking about, when there's more people on the field, when it's more real football, it's faster football in Josh Hopple's offense. And if he's not making the same mistake twice and he's moving the offense at the speed he wants to, and he's making plays with the walk-on receivers like Hubs talked about, uh, it seems like he's progressing in the right way. And it's also, I think it's pretty rare to have a guy that, it doesn't seem like he has much of a ego to him. I mean, five star number one overall player in the country, and he's fine sitting behind Joe and working with Joe, and Joe's coaching him up after uh, even those handoff reps that we see early in practice. So uh, it's a really fun dynamic to watch. I think UT is really fortunate to have it. 